What's up, guys? Welcome back to HRT. I hope you like the new setup. I'm sitting at a desk now. I feel all professional. Uh, today, we have uh, Jackson, my good old pal. Uh, we have some real good conversation today. And yeah, I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Slay, you work in the medical field? I was a right. CNA for a little while. Oh, nice. Slay. Yeah, what loved do, you, it. Can, do you want to talk about what you do now? I work at Amazon. Ooh, 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 ooh. I work at Amazon. Um, uh, How's yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's okay. It's, it's not bad. It's very... What's the word? Um, I'm very to myself at Amazon. Like I, I've met one friend. Uh, I mean, I've met, I've met a lot of people, but I have one like good best friend out there. Their name's AJ. They're really cool. Um, they're actually in the room beside me, uh, <laughs> probably sleeping. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, nice. It's been great. Amazon has really, really good trans benefits. Do they? Wait. Yes. Because I worked, I worked at Amazon as a driver for like a month, and then I was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> yes. So uh, the insurance that they have um, does really well with uh, top surgery and um, hormones and stuff like that. They are very big activists. I quit before I could get that insurance. <laughs> so <laughs> that um, this, is my, this is my second time working at um, Amazon. Really? What did you do before? Yeah. Um before i was living in south carolina oh. um and i was a picker there picker. i went and picked up a bunch of stuff oh, and put it in it. a box and then it got shipped now i'm a packer <laughs> so and back in picker to pack. alabama alabama roll time tell me about alabama what's it like living there um well i grew up in a very conservative uh town mm. um my very small city if anybody knows it i would be shocked it's called hopeful um slap out was another name we called it <laughs> it's very small um Aver alabama overall it's not it's alabama yeah <laughs> i mean there's one joke that you could probably say about alabama itself which is the cousin joke. <laughs> yeah. It's not true. No, I don't it's think it's not true. true. <laughs> I don't it's not think it's true. true. <laughs> it's not true. But no. Um, I feel like that joke is just about the South in general. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. No, um, it's not bad just because I don't, I don't get out much. <laughs> I work, I sleep, I eat, and I stay to myself. That's it. Yeah. Um, it's i've it's, only ever been i don't even think i've been to pride here really is there a pride there i can't imagine a pride in the south or in a red state yeah <laughs> um birmingham uh birmingham alabama does a big pride every year um and i've heard they're really good i've heard that they're you know they're decent they're your normal pride and stuff like that but i've never been to one yeah Interesting. Never been to one. I I've been to two prides, and I live in New York. I which think is a I've been state, to so. one, and it was in South Carolina. South Carolina. How was that? How long did you yeah. live in South Carolina for? Did you, were you three years. Ah, three years. Were you born yep. in Alabama? Um, I was born in Alabama. I was born and raised here. Unfortunately, um, yeah, I lived in South Carolina for about three years. I got a softball scholarship up there yeah. and played for a year, and then quit. I get so, it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. just, I've, I mean, I've played since I was four, and I kind of just fell out of love with the game. So, so it was more about not liking the game anymore, and not that, and not about your transition. That and medical problems. Gotcha. Um, I've had elbow, an elbow surgery, and I've also had carpal tunnel. Ooh. Ouch. Yeah. And a pinky, a pinky. I don't even know what the pinky's called. There's a name for it, but I just call it a pinky reconstruction. A <laughs> pinky reconstruction. That's funny. <laughs> I can't. I can't bend my pinky no. anymore. Really? Like at all? Yeah. I mean, I can straighten it and I can bend it. I don't. I can't straighten it all the way. I can force it straight, but like when I open, oh my god, my hand. Yeah. How, like, does that affect your 
normal life. I'm right-handed. I am right-handed. So, mm. um, at first it was tough. Mm. I've been three years. No, three four years. It's been four. Years. Yeah, it's been four years. I got my elbow done when this has got a big scar. I got my Ow. elbow done when I was 17 and then I had my carpal a year later. So when I was 18. Damn, that's a lot to go through as, as, a, as a youngin. And I have a, a torn rotator cuff too, but that's <sighs> never getting fixed. No, yeah, my Don't dad, my, I think my dad broke both of his rotator cuffs. I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, having, yeah, having a just your shoulder in general is just terrible. Any uh, injury to your shoulder is awful. Yeah, dude, I, something's wrong with my collarbone right now. I can't, this is as far as I can go, and I have no idea what's wrong with it. And it's been the worst, like, three days of my life. <laughs> so I don't know how do, you're out here living. <laughs> do you do you work out? Uh, not really. I go mm-hmm. for pretty intense walks sometimes. But that's about it. <laughs> 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 me when I walk at Amazon because I walk about about 22,000 steps is what I got one night Ooh, that's too much yeah. I stick to maybe like seven I don't I don't walk that much anymore since I'm in pack but I used to be on the ship dock and I would always have to move mm. so gotcha. 20 I think the highest I got was like 22 20 23,000 steps mm. wow that's a good amount. That's a that was my workout. <laughs> yeah, when you have when you workout. have a manual labor job like that, you don't need to go to the gym. I feel like it's it's just too much. And people that do, do yeah, like power bow down to them literally. For real, like, couldn't do it. Don't be mean. How are you working at Amazon, like lifting boxes all day with all those injuries you got over there? I think it's just more of like I'm used to it kind of thing because like with being in college and like playing college ball we used to do a lot of weightlifting and stuff like that so I kind of just had to deal with it go with the flow I mean I can tell you this ibuprofen I would say it's my best friend but I don't think it does anything for me anymore have you taken too much but I'll still (laughs) considering I've taken ibuprofen has been like my best friend since I was eight me too (laughs) so like Dude, I've been I mean, taking I, like three a day. It's disgusting. I got up to the point to where I was taking, I think there's so like in store over the counter, there's like 500 milligrams. I think it's the highest you can get. Yeah. I was taking like six a day. Shit, damn. <laughs> I should probably go check out my liver, but. I, that is the one thing about myself I'm worried about is my liver because I'd be taking those shits way too often. <laughs> it's like candy. I'm uh, like, mm, these taste until, good. Until I'm like on the ground, like hurling over. <laughs> Nah, <laughs> because my th- yeah my thing is like why would i want to be in pain if something can take away exactly. pain, just take it exactly. deal with the consequences later right exactly exactly <laughs> i'll be dead by like 56 <laughs> <laughs> honestly though i can't picture myself living past like 30 anyway so <laughs> i see my grandparents and i'm like how right like, how are you surviving out here at that age? Really? I can't. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think Especially t- now and like, our generation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think Tyler and I touched upon that because we, like, we were like, I can't imagine being, like, an old person and still, like, being on hormones and just, like, still being trans to say anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, you said something like that in one of your last videos, and I was like, <laughs> He's got a point. <laughs> like, I, I've, I, I mean, like, I know there's old trans people. Like, I know that. I've seen them, but, like, I haven't seen many of them. Like, I can't imagine being an old fart, like, injecting myself with testosterone every other week. Getting, getting the, like, in the nursing home, getting nurses and be like, all right, dude, just do it. Come on, get it over with. Honestly, and, you know, though, like, you're. Yeah. Like, I'm kind yeah. of excited to have a nurse do it for me, though, because I'm over <laughs> this shit. See, that was something something crazy working in the medical field because I was a CNA. I worked um, mainly in a rehabilitation center. Um, so people that would have hip surgeries or shoulder surgeries. Um, I mean, we did have a couple of long terms, but they would come in and I would get to sit by the nurses um, and watch them inject 
um, whether it was testosterone or estrogen or whether it was um, a lot of them were diabetics. Mm -hmm. So insulin shots were like one of the number one things. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. So did you ever inject anybody else or you just watch? Yeah, no, I, I wish I uh, eventually do when I get my nursing degree. Um, I want to go back to school. Yeah. I want to get my nursing degree and as you should King. go down that road. But nice. yeah. Uh, can I ask, are you on testosterone? Oh, uh, no, not right now. Not right now. Does that mean you were, or you, or do you plan on it? I, I plan on it and was. Okay. Um, I was on test. So this November, if I were, if I was still on testosterone, this November would have been two years. Okay. Um, I stopped, don't do this, but I went cold turkey. Um, I stopped probably about six, six, six ish, seven months ago. Hmm. Um, and I have a appointment November 29th to get back on. Can I ask why you stopped? Depression, (laughs) uh, mental health, really, uh, mental health and shot anxiety. Wow. Okay. This is hella yeah. interesting. Can I ask you questions yeah. about this? Go ahead, dude. I'm I'm all open for it. Slay. I okay. I have shot anxiety, so I half get it. I it's real. It's a real fucking thing. I get it. Yeah. Um now so you had shot anxiety and yes. uh now can I ask, did the testosterone because you also said mental health, did that did the do you think the testosterone like made you it made it worse? Hmm. In like a dysphoria sense or like it just yes. messed with your head? Oh, wow. Okay. That's interesting. Um, so being on testosterone helped my mental health a hundred percent. The shot anxiety played a part in dysphoria because of course it was like voices. It was more of like, you have to do this shot or you're not going to be in quotations good enough. You're not going to be man enough. Like you have to do this shot. And then like the other, like you, like there's angels that sit on your shoulder. The other Mm -hmm. one was like, if you do this, it's going to hurt. If you do this, you're going to get a knot. If you do this, like just, it was just a a console battle between like everything really. Um, And so, yeah, it was, it was rough. It was rough. It, I get it. I, cause I hate the fact that I have to inject myself with a needle every other week for the rest Mm -hmm. of my life. Sometimes it makes dysphoria a hell of a lot worse because the fact that we just have to do this in order to be in the body that we want is because like we said, like imagine being 80 years old, still, still have to do and still having to do this. Like that, like it's all funny and whatnot, but also it's kind of like, fuck man. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, honestly, like it's like, Mm. Yeah. Do I want to be doing this the rest of my life? Yeah. Like, am I trans? I don't know. <laughs> am I trans? <laughs> am I just like playing like a role right now? Like, is this Halloween just went on too long? <laughs> <laughs> and then people people think this is a choice. Like, you think I would choose this? God, that is Ugh. something that I have to fight with a lot of people with. Like, mm-hmm. why did you choose it? Mm-hmm. honey if i couldn't have chosen it if i didn't have like i, I didn't like no, no. I, I i fought with myself for so many years mm-hmm. before i decided to be like you need to be happy yeah like yeah mm. happiness like happiness is a choice i guess because i mean you could choose to see the bright and bad mm-hmm. side of things but like being who you are is not like you don't choose to yeah carry yeah. yourself like I, way. this isn't this isn't a choice like yeah. believe it or not i've been feeling like this mm, since the womb <laughs> since the dawn I of even, time <laughs> but, but since i you know first cry first breath high thing <laughs> Didn't know what it was, <laughs> but no, Teda, since I opened my eyes, okay, since I saw the world with my own two eyes, um, please step in my shoes, please. yeah, for real, and then come back at me, exactly. Uh, can I ask, were you uh doing sub Q shots or were you intramuscular? Sub Q, <laughs> motherfucker, god damn it, I know, I know. <laughs> um, I think it's crazy because so. 
Um, I got my testosterone through Planned Parenthood in South Carolina. Um, went through a couple of messaging people saying, how fast can I get on testosterone without having to go through, maybe mm. I shouldn't say this, <laughs> through can. a lot of letters and stuff like that. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And Planned Parenthood was the best choice. Yep. Um, and so I went in, they did blood work, or yeah, they did blood work. They showed me how to do it, sent me home, picked up my testosterone, and that night I stuck myself in the stomach. And um, because I had actually asked them a question about IM and SQ um, or sub Q. Mm-hmm. Um, they say that sub Q is a lot better for you. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> um, not necessarily like a lot better, but uh, in cis men, I don't want to say just in cis men, but like the what they told me, we'll put it this way, what they told me that doing it sub Q the testosterone um, has a absorbs better through fat than a muscle mm. is what they told me. So that's why they made me do sub Q. Cause I, I asked about, I am, and I was like, I hope to God, I don't have to do that because if I was to do that, I'm not trans. I'm not, I'm not trans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trans. It's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> You tell me I do. I I have to do uh, intramuscular. Absolutely not. I will walk my little happy booty out and go back home. Dude, uh, see that makes me think if I was given the choice, if I knew what sub Q was, if I would have chose it, I thought this was my only choice. I think it also depends on the person though too, because you're you're a, you're you're a good looking guy. Like you have a good you have a good like body shape. Like you're. I mean, I'm on the bigger side. I'm gonna go ahead and put that out there. Like I'm 220, 230. I don't know. I don't weigh myself anymore. But I never weigh um, myself. <laughs> I think it has to do with how much fat you do have in your body. And so, like, if you got a big, big, big cake back there, <laughs> sub Q is your best buddy. That's me. On the other hand, I got a belly. I got I got that dad bod going on <laughs> with all oh, no kids, but. Um, <laughs> I think I think it just depends on your what is the the body mass the uh, your BM is that what it's called your body mass yeah I, no that checks out because when I started testosterone I was a twig I was too small I was like like not well good I was <laughs> <laughs> it was a problem but like now that I've been on testosterone I think I've filled out now which sucks because now I I spent. 17 years of my life being a twig and now that like my muscle grows more like a cis man's wood and shit like i'm always like i'm fat and it's like that's yeah. stupid because i'm clearly not <sighs> i've always i've always been a bit a big kid um i've always been more heavier um like i think i was like 180 in high school which doesn't sound big but con- con- towards my friends, it was I was on the bigger side, mm-hmm. and testosterone made me gain weight, me unfortunately. Too. Which another reason, um, I was hungry all the time, I get and it. I don't, I don't, I don't have a metabolism. I get it, I get it. I I wish I would. I dude, I had the fastest metabolism ever before I started testosterone, and everyone was like, "Careful, it's gonna catch up with you." And I was like, "Shut up, uh, no, it won't." We used to tell we used to tell my <laughs> sister that, and it sure did catch up to her. I hate to say that, I love her, I do, but let's just say my sister's gotten a little thick, <laughs> and she used to be a twig. Yeah, it catches up with you. It does. I always thought that I would, because my dad's really skinny, so I was like, I'll be fine. It's in my genes. Skinny is in my genes. <laughs> Turns out it's not. I was always, I was always the kid. Like my dad's skinny. My mom used to be skinny before she had kids. Like love her, but she used to, you know, she had a high metabolism in high mm-hmm. school. I'm gonna be skinny. Like it. Once I hit puberty. <laughs> it's all gonna go away yeah right. absolutely not it just made it worse yeah it's testosterone does not help because it makes it fills you out first of all and it makes you just mm. grow muscle in different ways and it makes you hungrier so oh my goodness yes yeah i'm always hungry and i stress eat so it's just it's not a good combination <laughs> uh, we me and my mom have come to the conclusion that i binge eat when i am depresso 
<laughs> depression. Uh-huh. And testosterone <laughs> did not help that. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, how long were you on testosterone before you stopped? A, a little over a year and a half. A year and like a couple months because I started November 3rd of 2019. 2019. 2019. Yep. And how long have you been off? Probably since, probably about six ish months, seven ish months. months. Right. You said that. Okay. Wow. So can I ask, like, because a year is, that's a good amount of time. I remember, like, when I was a year on testosterone, like, my voice had already been been mm-hmm. dropped and shit like yeah all the changes happen within the yeah. first year i feel like um now did that side of the testosterone did that make you happy did that make you feel good like oh, realizing your voice drop and everything nice 100 percent. i mean i can remember like when before i came out and kind of truly like realized i was like okay you know maybe this is me mm. i would watch a lot of testosterone update videos absolutely best thing i love to watch them they were my favorite things um and sometimes i still get them on my tiktok um (laughs) but uh i was like oh i can't wait to do this like this is this is gonna be me like i can't wait for my voice to change um one thing i was so excited for that hasn't happened yet um is i was like i can't wait to get facial hair (laughs) as we can tell from the baby (laughs) it's not here yet (laughs) the Um, facial hair drop I have peach fuzz. It's there. Hey, hey, that's all you need. It's that's all there. You need. It gets shaved every week. So <laughs> Keep on shaving. Keep on hopefully shaving. Hopefully it'll help. It does. I mean, my, and like my dad, because like, you know, they say that jeans has a really big thing to do with facial hair and just body hair and stuff like that. And my dad's a pretty hairy man. <laughs> like my, my dad. dad man. <laughs> <laughs> my dad and like his dad and brothers and like my mom's dad side of the family, like they got they got some some thick beard i come from a hairy family <laughs> I, I do i do so like the fact that i ain't got one yet i was kind of depressed though about it i get that but i was like it takes time like, just, yeah. like it takes time you gotta you gotta you just gotta wait it out and then freaking i stop yeah i don't think i think i got my facial hair I mean, I had a mustache maybe like a year and six months in, and then I was like, I'm never shaving it. I'm never shaving the squirrel on my face. Then I finally shaved it, <laughs> and even though I had no facial hair, I would shave like every week, and then finally it started growing in, and it's so patchy as all hell. But – I mean, it looks good though. Like it, it looks good. Thank you. I've said this. I think it times. helps that you have dark hair too. Probably. Overall, yeah. Dark hair. Yeah. But no, it looks good. Thank you. I appreciate you. I think I've said it a couple no times. Problem. I uh, didn't know for the longest time that I didn't have to shave all the way down. So every time I would shave, I'd have baby face because I would, there would be no more hair. It took me six years to realize that I could use a guard. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it was either like long, pubish looking shit on my face or nothing <laughs> at all. Now it's like, why can't I rock facial hair? What is going on? <laughs> It was a real problem. <laughs> oh, goodness. So just so you know, when you shave, you can use a guard <laughs> just just to make that aware. Maybe I'll do an episode where I just yeah. shave. I just teach trans guys just, how to shave. Just, just cheat to do it, dude. Just Honestly, do it. I should. I still haven't figured out this whole fucking thing right here. I'm like, how far I think, do I go up? I, I think, never know. I think that takes time yeah. to know how to do that. Yeah. Because like I – like my dad, like I said, my dad, he's a very – hairy man like he's he's got hair and he's got a good beard and everything like that and like that was something that i noticed when i came out was like watching my dad shave was like so euphoric for me i was like i can't wait to do this even though even though i was like a little girl back when i was like <laughs> but i was like i can't i can't wait to do this like this looks so fun i wish i had a beard to do this and <laughs> Here we, are. Here we are. I shave. I shave the peach fuzz. That's yeah. It. Do it anyway. It still feels good. Hey, I, hey, if I can see it on the razor, then it's there. If I can see that shit in the sink, I'm valid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it might. It's not as dark as my leg hair, but <laughs> if I can see it in the razor and I can see it come off in the sink, that's all I care about. Dude, watch. Care about, it's there. Watch. You're gonna go. You're gonna go back on tea, and in like fucking however long from now, you're gonna come back just hair. You're just going to be a ball of hair. You're just going to be the hairiest man. 
like a like a like a six inch beard like hey yeah. down here got like like chest hair hanging out of my shirt <laughs> You're gonna come back with one of those like ponytail fucking beards. Uh, get 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 my best friend to braid it for me. Yeah. Starts learning to braid. Do the two, do the two, and just oh, yeah. like the little piece that hasn't like grown all the way out is like right there in the middle. Oh yeah, you're gonna. And then we got the, the curl for the mustache. You gotta curl it up for sure. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent. Especially if you're gonna braid, we're mm-hmm. gonna go for like the Viking look. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I see. I got, I got this planned out. Bro. I got you do. This planned out. <laughs> I love it. You're definitely going to be the hairiest man I've ever met. Okay. I see I it. So. I <laughs> so. Um, can I ask you, uh, when you were on testosterone, did you? Because a lot of trans guys, you know, talk about like the mood swings and stuff that you go through. Did you? Because I know you said that the testosterone made your dysphoria worse and just mess with your head a lot were the mood swings mm-hmm. a big part of that you know um in the beginning there wasn't a lot of mood swings in the beginning i was just really hungry more than anything i was really hungry and i didn't really notice anything at first except for the hunger um a lot of people talk about sex drive um that wasn't really anything for me either which is crazy me either um but in the end coming off was like coming off of testosterone the depression made it worse 100 percent made my mood swings fly through the roof um now being off for how long i have been it's been rough yeah i'll 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 say the truth i'll be open it's it's been rough it's been really rough um something that i miss about testosterone was i used to not be able to cry I used to not be able to cry, and I wish I had testosterone because I hate crying. I can't stand crying. I mean, like, a good cry is always good. Yeah. It's always good. Mm-hmm. Um, But when you do about three in a week, yeah, it's no longer there's fun. a problem. <laughs> <laughs> there's a problem. Like, I think um, my tire or something was – my car shut down. My car um overheated the other day, and <laughs> – ball i saw i called i called so the first um aj uh my friend that i work with at amazon i I called them and i was like hey i need you to come get me my car overheated you know i'm in this spot and they're like okay i'm on the way and so they get there and i see them like pull beside me they have their window down and i just go it just (laughs) ball just lost it and they were like jackson and i was like just let me cry just let me cry and then I think three days later, literally three days later, I was at work and I like walked in and I was like, <laughs> I just started bawling again. Bawling again. I guess. Yeah. I, cause I'm always like, man, I just, I need a good fucking cry. I need to oh, let 100%. these emotions out. But I, I, hearing you say that, cause I used to cry a lot too before disaster. Now I get it. I'm like, you know, I think I'd rather not cry at all then go I mean, back to crying all the time <laughs> yeah being on testosterone i was like dang i could really use a good cry right now like i wish i could cry now that i'm sitting in the chair that i am and i'm not on testosterone and i cry about three times a week i'm like if i don't get on testosterone right now <laughs> please god forbid me <laughs> dude i'm like oh this is this is this is this is not good we are we are not okay <laughs> i'm crying too much Dude, what the fuck is the science behind that? What is wrong with me? <laughs> what is wrong with me? <laughs> what is wrong with me? <sighs> I, I wish I knew the science. I wish I knew the science behind it. Somebody if listening, please. I can find please. a scientist, literally. If I can, if a scientist or anybody else there knows, please DM me the question, <laughs> the answer, because like, I want to know. Parts yeah. out to you if you if you know the the answer. Well, because it's not like testosterone can just like. <laughs> make water not fall from your fucking eyeballs <laughs> like what <laughs> literally literally like like i mean when i say like before testosterone and even now I'm, I'm i'm i mean even on testosterone i used to be a very sensitive person um especially before testosterone i was very soft hearted not to like mm. to my own porn or anything <laughs> but i was a very like selfless and like soft hearted person mm. and watching marley and me or oh, i don't stop. know <laughs> anime or just like anything like bald my eyes out the titanic made me cry my eyes out um one of my fa- like love that movie i would watch six hours of it if i could 
love that movie. Um, made me ball. Yeah. My eyes out. Like, used to be a very, very sensitive person. And then getting on testosterone, I was like, hmm, <laughs> um, mm, why am I not crying? If, like, if you're about to tell I me, though. I crying right now. <laughs> no, if, but if you're about to tell me that you were on testosterone and watched Marley and me and didn't cry, homie. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm being, like, dead. Like, dead ass. Like, I. Nah. That crying was did wrong. not exist. <laughs> Marley crying and me? Did, crying <laughs> did not exist when I was on testosterone. Dude, I think the movies and TV shows are the only thing that can really make me cry now. Like, actual real-life pain <laughs> can't, and it's concerning, but Marley yeah, and me, I, man, I, that's crazy. I, 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 uh, and it's a good movie. Like it's a great movie. Any dog show that I can't. you know the puppy passes away is a great movie, and it should make everyone ball their eyes out. But like, if I can't cry to Marley and me when I'm on testosterone, does that make me a psychopath? Because like, <laughs> I mean, maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a little. Maybe I should. Maybe I should do some therapy and see what's going on. I wonder if like, yeah, I wonder if you can like exercise the ability to cry when you're on testosterone i feel like a lot of trans guys start taking it. acting classes <laughs> yeah to make yourself cry <laughs> just go into act- acting and like they teach me how to cry like on demand because <laughs> what i would be suggest, like yeah. push this nerve right here yeah. ball. <laughs> a button you can push start crying because what i would suggest is watch like marley and me or like a video of a dog dying but if you can't cry from that you need you need to bring in the troops <laughs> you need more help I think the only time I cried when I was on testosterone was when my sister, so mm, grandparent, great grandparent passed away last summer. Um, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that'll that'll do it. <laughs> All right. And that'll so I was fine when I was in there. Like we were at the viewing and everything. I was okay. I was doing great. I was the supporter. Like, I was like, it's okay. Like, mm-hmm. they're in a better place. And then my sister starts crying because she sees my papa, my granddad, start mm-hmm. crying. And I've never seen that man cry. Oh. So I saw that man cry. I saw my sister, my little sister cry. And I just, like, broke out. And I was like, not the place to have a good cry. Mm-hmm. But thank you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, no, it's a different. People are like, it's a different type of pain to see your mom or dad cry. It's a different type of pain to see your grandma or grandpa cry. A hundred percent. And uh, like my grandmother, I love my Mimi. I love my Mimi to death. Um, every time we're on the phone, she cries when we hang up, or like she'll tear up. Like you can hear it in her voice. I'm just like, stop. Like stop. That's so stop. cute though. <laughs> I'll cry right now, Grandma. I will cry I'll right cry now. Right now. <laughs> Don't even Stop try it. me, Grandma. Stop it right now. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that'll that'll do it though. That that's the one. <laughs> that is the one. Um, what uh, dose were you on when you were on testosterone? Do you remember? Oh goodness gracious! I. Pretty sure I was on 0.5 milliliters. Okay, cool. Again, can somebody please leave a comment telling me what the difference is between sub Q and intramuscular fucking doses? I ask because I want, you know, if somebody else out there understands, they can like. What do you take? I'm on 100 milligrams every two weeks, intramuscular. So the only thing that I can think of is the reason. The reason you do it, or you do so much, we'll put it this way, you do so much, because in, in, in general, you do one milliliter is what it is. Yes, correct. Right, right, okay. So you do one, and the reason you do so much is because you do it two weeks, yeah. every two weeks, whereas I, I was on 0.5 every week. 0.5, 0.5 milligrams? Milliliters. What's the fucking difference? <laughs> I'm going to Google it. That's the difference between between. Let's see. Bring this bad boy out. What you got? Ooh, 
Oh my god, that's so cute. Please. <gasps> Look, it even has my old name. I love that. I painted this myself, actually. I'm not slinking. I could start any day if I wanted to. Really? Oh, so yeah. you still got it. I have... Pretty sure I just have one. Yeah, I'll have one. So... Oh, it has my dead name on there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I do a half what it says it says a half of a milliliter so i do 0. 0.5 is what it is so you're just you're just doing you're doing one whereas i'm doing a half of what you're doing but i um, do it every week and you do it every week. two weeks right and that so, other half for me just goes farther because yeah because yeah. um, i just looked I, it up i think that's what it is milligrams measures weight milliliters measures volume of the liquid mm. That does nothing for me. I don't, still don't know what that fucking means. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense to me just because I was like a science nerd and stuff like that. But yeah. oh, right, you're like smart, but, and I'm like not. <laughs> not smart. No. You have to be funny. a little smart to work in the medical field, though. You have to be. You're automatically not smarter. Really? Than me, just for that title. Not really. Just book smart. Hey. Book smart. I, I think comment. Uh, being being having i mean you have to have a little common sense too but like book smart goes a long way it does put it that way it does i don't think i'm book smart though i mean i i'm sure i have some book smarts but i think i succeed more in the common sense area street smart i hope god (laughs) i i think i would i think i would i would fall more in the street smart than i would the book smart actually Play, play. I that's where my people are. I feel like I don't. We just connect better. <laughs> yeah, no. I can say something dumb as shit, and that person beside me that has the same common sense as me understands it. Yeah. Whereas the dude with book smart and has no common sense has no clue what we're talking about. Exactly. I think I said it one time. Like, if if me and you are in a room full of people, and somebody says something fucking weird or like something that reminds us of something else, if I can't look at you and be like. Just like look, and we can't share just a look, look of like what the hell can't... did that guy say? Then we can't be friends. Like if I look at you yeah. and you're like, "Why the fuck are you looking at me?" I, I exactly I can't do that. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, I think I think all like best friends, mm-hmm. group of best friends, has that look. So mm-hmm. like if you just like look at that person, y'all just like either die out laughing or just give each other. It's just like you can't explain it. It's just that look. Yeah, it's the best. And I love that. It's like. <laughs> We should go home. That was that was weird. <laughs> Get a load of this guy. <laughs> should we stay? Should we? Should we? Should we investigate? <laughs> For real? Or should we just? Should we just stay in our lane? Stay in our lane. Stay in your Got lane, it. bitch. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. <sighs> so. I want to go back into uh, – you said you had shot anxiety. I want to talk about yes. that more. Yeah. How did that, like, look for you every time you had to take your shot? Um, It looked like the very first shot that I ever gave myself, but a little bit worse. Um, I actually have a video of my first shot. Um, I was very – I wouldn't say fidgety, but I was very hesitant on sticking myself in the belly for the first time Mm -hmm. as one should be i mean you're giving yourself a shot it's a needle you're like are we sure this should be going in me (laughs) again Um, is it a choice i think it might be (laughs) is it a choice (laughs) are we sure (laughs) um no uh it was like i said it was the first time after that first shot boom done gone Mm -hmm. over with Dinosaur mm-hmm. Band-Aid and everything. <laughs> um, or Spider-Man Band-Aid. Like, I'm telling you, it was good. It was awesome. And mm-hmm. then once I got a little bit of shot anxiety, which I think what initiated my shot anxiety, which started – which what started my shot anxiety was – um. so after – I was uh, injecting in my belly, of course, um, and only my belly. But I was swapping um, on either side of my belly button. Um, so I was going from the right and the left. And so after a while, you know, like scar tissue can form up in a certain area if you stick yourself for mm-hmm. so long, which I had been doing it for a year. So I think what my thought process was is 
I started getting scar tissue under my skin and it just made my shots painful. Mm. Um, I couldn't get it not to hurt. And then um, on not only that, I would form a bubble. It almost looked like there was a bubble under my skin and it was hard as a rock, mm. um, which scared the living crap out of me until mm-hmm. I had to call my doctor and they're like, you're fine. You're okay. Just rub it out. And I was like, okay. So um, pain was the one thing that mm-hmm. kind of like every shot day which mine was uh i switched it was thursdays and then it went to tuesdays hmm. nice um, to tuesdays <clears throat> and they were thursdays that's wow yeah that. uh, thursday started out thursdays and then i had missed like a whole week and i was like oh, well i guess we'll do it on tuesday and then i was like oh two shot tuesdays <laughs> okay and i think i did it monday one time too and i was like manly mondays yeah i never thought but, about that one i like that yep, manly mondays um but uh but yeah and so the pain just started getting worse and worse and so like every time i went to go like inject myself i was like god this is gonna hurt like it was just a just a voice in my head like mm-hmm. me talking back to myself and the whole like wrap around it, around it mm-hmm. i i relate to that hard i can i ask you were you told to do it in your stomach or yes. you were told did they say you could do it in the in the in the cheeks nope. they didn't let you they never mentioned it when you go never back when you go back on testosterone do you want to do it in the cheeks absolutely not no cheeks um no i okay. have shot anxiety overall whether it's a flu shot or you know the covid shot or just mm-hmm. A steroid shot. The only shot I will take in my butt, in my cheek, is a steroid shot when I'm sick. That's the okay. only thing I will, unless they hold me down or strap me down to a table, no uh, shots in my butt. Hey, shot um, anxiety is a I real just, thing. Oh, 100%. I just think also it has to do with the flexibility. I'm not very, like, <laughs> No, it's <turny>. hard. <laughs> I'm having turny. a terrible... <laughs> I have a very bad swivel. Um, <laughs> So like, I've thought about, Swivel. you know, like what I'm trying to, let's see, what did I try to do? I don't know what I did, but I just remember one day I went to go like look at my butt or something like that. <laughs> and I started getting like a cramp like up my side and I was like, nope, mm, nope, mm, that's not happening. That's it's, not, no, we're not doing this. Dude, it's I don't just, know how to do it. It's just a weird, just a I don't know. I don't think I could do it. I, I can't. I tried because intramuscular, I could also put it in my butt as well. Yeah. And I've tried a couple times. I can maybe put it in like the side cheek, but I don't know how motherfuckers yeah, be not out going here on like at all. Mm-mm. 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 No, no. I don't know. I just, uh, I think it would be. I think my shot anxiety would be worse if it was in my, okay. my butt. Okay. Stomach's just like I said. Stomach's just there. Like I can, right. you know, like one and done, you mm-hmm. know, kind of thing. Or used to be able to. Mm. Did was every shot? You said that it start every shot started to get painful after a while, right? Um, after a while, yeah. I think I want to say probably hitting the year and a half mark. Mm-hmm. Um, or not a year and a half. I'm a little over a year mark. Mm-hmm. Um, it started to get a little painful. So mm-hmm. every and like I said, I do I do mine every week. So. Yeah. that that's a lot that if you really think about it that's four shots a month mm-hmm. so like it's it's a lot um i i couldn't do every week rough. i think that's what i like about intramuscular is that i don't have to do it every week and I, like you said i you said you skipped a whole week of shot did i skip I my shot all the time all the time my shot day was on tuesday i took it saturday which I completely yeah. almost messed up my entire schedule. I'm so yeah, bad. I skipped a whole week and it was awful. It was terrible. Uh, Cause I was like, I skipped a week cause I forgot to take it. And by the time I remembered to take it, I was like, it's too late. Yep. Like it's way too late to do this shot. So I'm just going to wait until the next week. Mm-hmm. And so it was, I guess it, I guess actually it was like a whole like two weeks before I took my next shot is what it was mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. that's exactly right. Because I said Thursdays and that's how it became Tuesdays. We, yeah. because I was like, well, I missed it on Thursday, so I'll just do it, you know, that next Tuesday. And right. that's, that's kind of where it came from, I guess you would say, but I don't know. It was, it was rough. It was rough. Yeah, no. I And I used a small needle. Really? I was going to ask, do you know what size you used? I'm pretty sure I used a 22. Yeah. I think I'm supposed to use a, like a 
a, a bigger one, but I still only use 21, 22, and I just trigger warning even for you. Maybe I, I pushed it in farther than it was supposed to go because I didn't want to use a bigger, bigger needle. Mm-hmm. It, I, Cause the first time I said it on yeah. one of the last episodes too, I, the first time I took my shot, which scarred me for life, I used an 18 gauge fucking needle on myself. I don't understand how they didn't tell you not to use it. Oh God. Like, Duh. they probably did honestly. And I was an idiot, but like, <laughs> <laughs> I think that- we're just going to try this. <laughs> Absolutely not. Dude. It was like. I think, uh, all jokes aside, that was like the f- the first time I was like, "Am I sure I'm trans?" <laughs> like, oh my goodness, that just like that. Hearing you say that the, uh, on one of your episodes, I was just like, "This man is a trooper." Because if it was me, no, this is a choice. Uh, this is an absolute choice. <laughs> I am just a dyke. <laughs> I am. I'm a masked <laughs> lesbian. Oh God! I think after oh. after this, now I'm gonna have to title this episode "Is Being Trans a Choice?" <laughs> like I have to. I think. <laughs> like, are we sure it's not after this shot? <laughs> Dude, honestly though, if you saw me taking that shot, you would not be calling me a I trooper. I would have cried for you. I was bawling my eyes out. I, I would have been do like, it. the like the medical part in me would have been like, okay, so we're gonna plug this, and then we need to have a talk because <laughs> yeah. this shouldn't have happened. I don't know what to do. Uh, <laughs> it was god awful, dude. The most pain uh, I've I ever been in my life. I'm sure. And, like I don't think people understand how big of an eight, like an eighteen gauge needle is. Like it doesn't sound big, but like, <laughs> like it's fucking no, big it's, and it's, it's thick. It's, yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like the thickness of an yeah. eighteen gauge needle. Like you got to remember because what's crazy about it is if you think about piercings, they also do it by gauges. Mm-hmm, so that's true. my septum. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure was done with either an 18 or a 16 gauge needle. So if you have a septum ring, mm. think about that thickness of the metal going into your thigh. Ugh. Absolutely not. Uh-uh. Absolutely not. Mm-mm. No, thank you. Mm-mm. Nah. Mm-mm. We would have. I would have had a talk with somebody, <laughs> someone. If I don't care if it was jesus or mother mary i don't care but i would have had to talk with that <laughs> i would have talked to god okay <laughs> we would have a sit down conversation like i don't care you're not showing up anytime i ask for you but i need you to show up now show yourself <laughs> show yourself help me believe in you i need you right now and you're not here <laughs> Oh, no, because that is how it felt. That is how I felt. No, one time I really need you. <laughs> you should have seen me, though, dude. I had needle and syringe in one hand and the testosterone <laughs> bottle in the other. And I was like, dude, what is it working? <laughs> Are we sure about this? My leg is oozing blood. <laughs> I'm like, I get it. <laughs> Which one do I put down? <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> no, that's exactly what I was doing, and my mom was like, "I don't know." <laughs> and she was like, "She was like, this was your choice." And I was like, "It's not a choice." Not a choice. Oh, dude, yeah, I don't know how Ooh. the fuck I got over that. <laughs> uh dude bow down to you man bow down to you because i would have not i would have been like no. <laughs> absolutely but like okay did you ever like do you have to listen to music did you do anything to help make yourself feel better when you're taking your shot or no mm. are you just too overwhelmed to do anything i think mine had to do with um, I get overstimulated very quickly, very quickly. As you can tell, I also have an oral fixation. So, <laughs> toothpicks are my best friend. But um, it's okay. It makes you look really cool. 
<laughs> um, I had that the room had to be very silent. Um, Ooh. for me, which was weird. Um, the room had to be very silent. Like if I had a fan going off, oh. um, if it was too loud outside my apartment, I had to shut every door, every window. Um, I think I got to the point to where I did most of my shots in my closet. In your closet? In my closet. It's metaphorical, bro. <laughs> I mean, I came out every time, but like... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but no, yeah, I I mean, I would I would set it up. I got to the point, um, I actually videoed some of my shots also. Because um, being an Alabama email, a lot of people don't know what trans is transgender mm-hmm. is or anything like that what that entails, um yeah. so i had a few people that wanted to know more about it and like so i was like i'm gonna do my shot on a facebook live one day and so i have a face a couple of facebook lives out there with me doing my shots um hmm. so oh, that's cool yeah did that do you think that maybe that helped you where you were you were like okay i'm on live like i need to yes yeah it did um just because i was like all right let's do it you like get it over with and then hang up the phone because yeah. like, mm, mm-hmm. people. but yeah. um but yeah it, it definitely did for sure that's cool but <clears throat> silence is interesting i need music i can't have silence if i have silence i'll freak like, out nope i would so i really ranged from when i did my shots from the morning to the night um before work and after work so i didn't really have like a set schedule um just on thursdays and tuesdays is what it was but i do know that i would only do it after a shower after a shower and i would line up all my stuff so i would which no one told me that i was supposed to draw my testosterone out with an 18 gauge needle um so i was drawing it out with a 22 gauge needle which took or yeah took forever took forever yeah dude. um so i'm like sitting there and i'm like just give me a second <laughs> it's, it's going just hold on hold on um yeah it's awful just it's but coming one second just it's, hold on. It's coming. <laughs> hold on um how's your day going um but yeah so i would do that i would cap it put it on the table get my alcohol swab or my alcohol pads um lay them down rip them open rip the top open and then i was like all right let's do this and so one by one yeah i would i would set everything out and <laughs> boom done and i even for the longest time i made a makeshift sharps box um it was the big tripod boxes oh my god yeah um, that i used to put my needles in and that's badass I didn't know this but you can buy sharps box from walmart oh you can for buy it from walmart you can i don't know can, and cvs and stuff like that and I, they won't take them but i think you can call like the fire department in your area and be like hey i have a box of sharps uh for like Wait. needles and stuff like that that i that are used and they'll do like they'll they'll bio bio hazard them you can't you you can't just throw you them out just, i did but i don't think you're supposed to oh shit <laughs> I mean, I didn't because like I didn't know that because like when I used to watch a lot of trans guys do their testosterone shots, they would always put it in a sharps box or some kind of box. I never saw anybody throw them away, which I wasn't told we needed a sharps box. I was just like, okay, done, didn't cap it, boom, it's in a trash can, and I just threw it away. That's what I did. I just capped it and threw it away, and then I and then and then I think I said something to like one of my doctors about you know my testosterone shots and stuff like that and they were like okay well what do you do with your needles and i was like i just throw them in the trash <laughs> and they're like you do what and i was like i throw them in the trash like in the trash like in my bathroom trash <laughs> they were like oh my god you, no you're not no like that's a biohazard i was like well, how do i suppose i'm like well, I, well it's capped like nobody can like it's just prick capped. it's like i think Sorry. it's the biggest thing of like crackheads like mm. actual like people that need needles i think they're it's more of like a get them off the streets kind of thing because yeah, 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 crackhead yeah. will go into any trash and be like "Ooh, needle need it that checks out you that completed my treasure hunt. <laughs> yeah that makes sense 
Well, I do but use I'm, a I do you do use a needle box thingy now at least. I haven't thrown it away yet. When are you supposed to throw them away? I mean, like I've been using it for like fucking six months now, it feels like, and it's not like to the top yet. So I'm just <laughs> You just you just do it until you can't fill it no more. Like, uh when you get to the point you can't you can't put any more needles in it, I think that's when you take it to fire department. I don't know if I think some doctors have to do it, but I think it's very rare that if they do like I don't even think you can take it to a hospital, but I, I know for a fact, like in my area, you can take it to a, a fire department because I had called somebody one day and I was like, what do I do with my sharp sharps box? And they're like, take it to your fire department and I'll do something with it. That's, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. It could I be different just for other away. places, but that's my experience of. I don't want to go all the way to the fucking fire department. I just throw it away. No, it's just like, mm, God. fire department, hot man. <laughs> You're like, okay. I'll go. <laughs> okay. I'll go. Okay. <laughs> Period. That's not funny. Yeah, I would have wow. had no idea. I guess that makes sense with, you know, drug addicts. Now I won't throw my sharps container away. I won't do it. I mean, it being a sharp I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I have another question for you. Uh, do you think that your personality changed compared to when you were on T and when you're off besides like the whole crying thing. Like, do you mm. carry yourself differently? Do you like, or anything? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, before testosterone, I was definitely a different person mm. on testosterone, another completely different person. Being off of testosterone, I'm not the same person that I was before testosterone, but I'm a different person, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so now I carry, I'm more broad shouldered. If I meet a new person, I'm like, hey, hello, my name's Jackson. Like, I'll deepen my voice. Like, mm -hmm. I don't have boy juice, so I got to act more manly kind of thing. Mm, okay. That's yeah. interesting. I like that. I mean, mm -hmm. did you see changes like, Cause you pass pretty well, like you have a low voice. Like I would assume you're. Boy, don't lie to me. I look like a fourteen year old little boy. <laughs> okay, you look young, but so do I. Like I would still think you're a cis man if I passed you on the street. You know what I mean? Like you pass <laughs> very well. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I assume not. But like, do you, did you? Because you obviously on testosterone, you saw changes happen. Did you see changes happen again after you stopped? Besides, you know, like. Whatever. My voice has gotten higher. Really? I like your voice. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like that my voice has gotten a little higher than what it used to be. I could be wrong, but, because, you know, we all have our doubts and stuff like that. Um, hair is definitely changed. Mm. Um, which, of course, you can see I have a full head of hair. <laughs> um, but being on testosterone... I didn't necessarily have like hair loss or anything like that, but my hair was thinner because I used to, before my transition, I had thick hair, mm -hmm. thick hair. Really? Um, <laughs> yes, very thick hair. Um, and so like being on testosterone, testosterone um, it was very thin um, and everything like that. Being off of testosterone now, it has gotten thicker again. Hmm. Uh, same thing for my leg hair. My leg hair is lighter than what it used to be on testosterone. I think testosterone does make your hair darker. I feel like that's a common theme for trans guys. I think it's more of like it being coarse, like the hmm. the thickness of it. The the the. You're smarter than me. Soft me. And, <laughs> I don't know. I'm like testosterone know. changes your hair color. <laughs> I mean, no, but like I, I I do agree. I think so too because. I used to be, I mean, I, I am still kind of a dirty blonde, I guess you would say, but yeah. like being on testosterone, my hair was dark before it was dyed and stuff like that. It used, it was darker. Like my head, my leg hair was not, I mean, yeah, it's thin of course, but there is a, excuse me, <laughs> there is a, um, a difference in it for sure with being on and being off. Hmm. That's interesting. And how about, mm -hmm. uh, how about emotionally? Like, I know you said that the actual process of doing your shot every week made you more dysphoric, but 
what is your, if you want to talk about it, what is your dysphoria yeah. like compared to being on testosterone and then being off of it? Um, being on it. So I didn't have, I mean, I had dysphoria. I had normal dysphoria like a trans guy does. Um, because I do still have, you know, my chesticles, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, of course, I had regular dysphoria every day. But being on testosterone, I didn't have it with my shots in general. And then at the end, getting hesitant about doing my shot every day, that caused more dysphoria because of me being like, you have to do this shot or you're not manly right. enough. Like you have to do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, like this is your life for the rest. Of, like this, this is a, a lifetime thing. Like you have to do it or you're not going to be manly. Being off of testosterone is a hundred percent worse. A hundred percent worse because I'm like one emotionally, I cry every day. Like I said, I cry every day. Um, so I'm emotional to everything. Um, and it hasn't helped. The depression wise, my depression has gotten worse, unfortunately. No sympathy. We're good. We're fine. <laughs> We're alive. But it's just um it's just in my head again about the like you need to get back on testosterone because like you're not passing or you know, you're not where you wanna be or you're not manly. Like people don't see you as a man. People 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 see you as a as a girl. Like you you need to, you know, you need to get back on testosterone, which I was talking to my mom. Mm -hmm. My mom knows about me being on testosterone and stuff like that, of course. But I was talking to my mom and my friend, and I was like, I think a big reason why I am, in quotations, so depressed is because I'm not on testosterone. Like, 100%. Not necessarily because of the, the, the testosterone, but it's like because of testosterone making my emotional state. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a big difference. There's a big difference. So your dysphoria became. Do you think your dysphoria is worse now that you were on testosterone and stopped from when you like were pre T? Yes. Because you because you saw the changes and then like you didn't have them Absolutely. anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> like, um, like I said, something about I feel like my voice is a little higher than what it used to be. Um, that's a little dysphoric for me. Yeah. Um, especially in some instances, like when I talk or certain things that I say and it's crazy because lately I've been having a lot of voice cracks and used to be so excited about voice cracks. I was like puberty. <laughs> yeah. And then now I'm like, uh no, absolutely <laughs> not. That is something we're not doing. I get that. Um I feel like for me I voice cracks were I was like you said, I was really excited about them, and now when they happen, I'm little... like, hundred percent. I know, hundred percent. I will point out a voice crack in a minute, though. I'm like, did you hear that? And sometimes, like, some of them can be really bad. Where I'm like giggling, I'm like off my ass giggling, and then other times, like, why? Why now? Why? why I know. Now? I know. You know, I thought too. Like you were saying, you know the pressure to take your shot every week because it was like, even from a societal standpoint, like a lot of people who I wouldn't be friends with think or preach, I guess that you're not trans enough unless you're on hormones and going yeah. through all the medical transition side. Mm. Um, so I can see how like not being on testosterone wouldn't it be makes fun. me feel that way yeah it, it it makes me feel that way do you you said you don't you didn't get top surgery yet right you do you want top surgery yes yeah yeah I, I, do you have like plans to get it or are you still working um, towards the testosterone Amazon. first right like, right you know, right yeah right Amazon. uh they have really good coverage um some people and like I said, it also deals with like the doctor you go to and stuff like that and the surgeon you get. But with my insurance through Amazon, I think I get 80%. I'll get 80% oh. of it paid for. Wow. That's which wild. is a lot. Yeah. If, if you, if it, wow. going around top surgery prices, mm -hmm. right. it's 
it's a good bet. Yeah, hell yeah, it is. Hey, all my fellow trans guys out there who haven't had top surgery yet, go work at fucking Amazon or Starbucks because both of those places. Really? Starbucks? Yeah, Starbucks. I didn't find that out until like right after I got my top surgery, so that sucked. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, Starbucks will pay for your hormones and top surgery as well. If you want to go be a barista. <laughs> Fit me. I don't like people. <laughs> Come be me. I hate everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very like much. I would consider myself an 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 introvert. Um, yeah. I like. There's a there's a saying out there. Uh, it's. I like being. I like being alone, but I don't like being alone. Mm, or something mm-hmm. like that yep no i get you yeah and that's 100 percent my life motto there's also a huge difference between like being alone and feeling lonely like yes, i 100%. love my alone time i love it but to feel lonely yeah. is a different whole different thing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um <clears throat> now that we talked about uh testosterone and everything i want to ask when you came out as trans how long have you been out as trans I have been out in October, believe it or not, on coming National Coming Out Day. Because now I was that bitch. <laughs> um, it will be two, three, two years, three, three years, three years. <laughs> nice. Um, I graduated high school in 2019. I came out 21, so two years. It'll be two years. You came out after high school. Yes, a year after high school, two years after high school. Did you know you were trans I before that? <laughs> yes, I did. Um, I knew around the age. So this is crazy. Mine and Bear's experience with being trans and coming out is similar. Um, I knew around the age of twelve. Nice. Wow. Um, I mean, I knew I knew before then, but like right. actually knowing what the word transgender. Um, it was mm. and finding out what it was was around the age of 12 you know when we're curious about everything on the internet mm-hmm. um, uh, Jazz Jennings came up on my YouTube that's and I was like up. hmm that's interesting wow I was like I didn't know you could do that and never knew never knew you could never knew a girl FTM never knew of it um, and then Oh, this man, I love him so much. No offense came up on my my uh, suggested mm-hmm. for you. And I uh, knew this man when he first came out. Baby, baby Noah. Love this man. Dude. Absolutely love his music. I cannot wait for him to come back to the U.S. because I'm going to one of his concerts. Like, ah. Uh, that the I, man, the myth, the legend. I love yes, that kid. Yes, he is awesome. Yes. He is. He is so. Uh, he's just such a good dude. Such a he good. Dude. I wish I could talk to him personally. Brilliant. But he just made a song. I haven't listened to it, but I heard him talk about it on Instagram and uh, TikTok. Or maybe I'll plug that next episode. Um. Anyways, uh, you knew you were trans at the age of twelve, and then at you the age of twelve, high school. Yes. And I came out. Um, when I was 20, I came out to a couple of friends um, in, so I came out to friends in July, June, June of 2020. And then I came out like publicly to everyone in October of 2020. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, cause it was like one of those things of like, let me just try this out. Let me make, cause like, I mean, I knew, cause it, I mean, like I said, I, I knew by the time I was 12, wrote a note to my mom, lost it in middle school, picked it up and the dude had read it and kind of just looked at me, ripped it up, threw it away. And I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, um, you wrote a note to your mom about you being trans and you yeah, lost that mm-hmm. note? Lost that note in school. It was in one of my binders and it had fallen out and the kid had picked it up in the class that I was in and put it under his seat. And I went in like, cause I went to my next class and I was like, okay, where's this note so I can finish writing it. Heart dropped to my. Yeah. Um, yeah. I bet. And I was like, Oh, Oh shit. Oh shit. 
uh, uh, went back to class, saw it under the desk, and I was like, I'm just looking for something, and I was like, please, please you read it, didn't you? Oh my god, I'm in so much trouble. Grabbed the note, ran out of the class, ripped it up, threw it in the trash, and went to my next class. Yeah. It was terrible. It was That's awful. Terrifying. It was terrible. Um, and then I eventually did mention something to my mom later on about at the age of 12 still, uh, later on, like a couple weeks after that about being trans. Wow. And how do you have a supportive family? No, you don't. Oh no, I'm sorry. Um, um, I have a few supportive family members. Um, I have an aunt that is really supportive of it. It's good. Love her. Love her. Um, and then I have a best friend. Her mom is a very big supporter. I'm sure if she was here, she would be a very big supporter too. Um, but she kind of fortunately committed suicide when we were 13. Oh, I'm so sorry. So uh, it's fine. It's fine. I'm going to kick her ass when I see her. <laughs> but uh, no, she, her mom is very supportive of me. Love that woman to death. That's um, nice, you guys and know. other immediate family, I guess you can say, not so much. Um, yeah, no, not really. Did you come no, out? Like, did you come out and they were just like, "No, we don't support this." Or... Basically, uh, so like I said, I told my mom when I was twelve, and she was like, "In order to be trans, you have to do this, 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 and that." And I was like, <laughs> "No, thank you. <laughs> that is not me. Absolutely mm -hmm. not." um battled with myself in the head for seven years i think it's if you add it up right i think it's seven years mm -hmm. um, and then got into a relationship with this girl and i was like oh, something just doesn't feel right dude like i've been hooking on to this storm ryan and this calvin and, <laughs> and like so why did why do these people interest me like what is going on and then like i mean i was i was i was a mask lesbian like i was like short hair dressed already masculine like and then i would get really big euphoria from people saying yes sir or like just just mm -hmm. affirmations of like of mm -hmm. being a man and i was like mm, why does that make me happy what is that about <laughs> what, is, what is that about and so like i just i battled my myself and i had a friend that i talked to and i was like dude i am pretty sure i was meant to be a dude i am i'm pretty sure i am a dude dude like this, this, <laughs> pretty this sure i'm a dude I, dude <laughs> i think i'm a man i think i am a I think I'm a boy. I think I'm a man, dude. I, this is, this is, this is. And they were like, okay, well, what's your name? Like, what do you want to, what's your, what's your pronouns? And I was like, well, can we just start off with they? Can we, we'll just, you know, we'll try out they and he, and we'll just mix them around. Because I didn't really have dysphoria being called she. Mm. Um, and my dead name wasn't a problem to me. So I was like, well, let me just go, you know, one semester in college of going by he and Jackson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> and so. did, did I'm guessing that went well? Since here we oh, are. Oh, it went so well. Um, it was it. It just felt so natural, and it was it was weirdly comforting, right. weirdly euphoric. Um, was it like people? at school you had people at school calling you by yeah. your name and yeah. stuff and then... i went i was like just one semester you know one semester right. what's the worst they can say is like mm, faker you know like <laughs> yeah. they're not gonna know me in five years right there you and go. so i went into school that semester and i was like i go by jackson and he him pronouns Slide. and they were like okay started being called jackson and it just like it just it was it, like i said it was just something that just fit yeah the pronouns were like like it just i was like hmm. so people at school would you, like did you have problems at school with people uh not respecting your name and pronouns um or? i went to an all girl used to be catholic used mm. to be catholic all girl college private college um they 
came off the Catholic part. They never did. They didn't do like Bible school or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it was just an all girl private school. Mm -hmm. Um, and then my last year there, my sophomore, the end of my sophomore year, they did, um, boys and girls. Um, and I worked with work study in the men's dorm hall. Um, Mm -hmm. that was a little rough. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I never had like physical trouble, but there were people that would one misgender, of course, because I sounded like a freaking mice, a mouse. (laughs) I sounded really, I mean, my voice was high. My voice was high. Um, so like, I mean, misgendering was rough to handle with. And of course you just have those cis men that are just, they're just awful people. Like they just (laughs) don't care about anybody but themselves. And Mm -hmm. so I think the worst incident that I had in college after I had come out was sitting there doing my homework because I would check in people from the dorm or in the dorm. Mm -hmm. And so the worst incident was this dude had come up to me and like asked me a question and he was using she pronouns. And I was like, I go by he, like I'm a dude, you know, I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm a man. And he was like, no, you're not. You clearly have boobs and you sound like a woman. You're, you're a, you're a woman. And I was like, no, that's not like I am a man. And it broke out into like a big argument. And I ended up having like the RA come in and I was like, you got to handle this because I can't be here anymore. If I, mm-hmm. something will go wrong if I'm here. Mm-hmm. So. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. not fun. Hey. That, I'm, it is what it is. It's part of life. At okay. least you had the guts to, I think I said this in the last episode to uh, Luke, that at least you had the the guts to say something and do something about it because yeah. a lot of people would just run and hide and that could be dangerous. You know what I mean? Cons- let's put it this way. So considering it was somebody that I didn't know and didn't care about, I stood up for myself. Whereas mm. when it comes to my family, mm-hmm. I accept. Mm. How did yeah. you how did you cope with that? Cuz I do you live with do you live by yourself now? Yep, thank the Lord. <laughs> Is that how you cope with it? You got away or Uh I think it's more of the fact of when I first told my mom and my dad, my dad immediately I'm a big I'll put this out there. I'm a big family man. I love my family to death no matter how wrong you do me like you could kill my cat and I would probably still love you a little bit. Like that's, that's who I am. That's how I am. And it, it's just a matter of the fact of like, when I told my dad, he was like, you're always going to be dead name to me. She, her pronouns, you know, you were born. This isn't right. Blah, 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 blah. My mom on the other hand, which is crazy to me because I told her when I was 12, came back seven years later and told her the same thing. And she was like, you're always going to be dead named to me. Like this, I named you that for a reason. That's your name. And so. Yeah, but it's my name, mom. Yeah, it was, it was rough. It was, it was definitely rough. My mom still dead names me all the time. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, But now it's more of the fact of like, at first I was like, okay, it's going to take time. Like this is just something, you know, this is, this is hard for a parent to go through. And it, 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 you knew me for 19 years mm-hmm. as that person, mm-hmm. which somewhat of the still person, but I mean, I, you knew me that going from a different name is, is a little tough. I can understand it. You mm-hmm. know, I'll give you, I'll give you some space for sure. And then two years later, it's still the same thing. And so like now it's more of like, I cope because I just block it out. Like half of the time when my mom says my dad's name, I don't even, mm-hmm. It just goes through one year out the other. When you're exposed to um, much, I mean, I can't imagine there's mm-hmm. any other way. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I think that's been one of my biggest um, battles lately, I will say. Um, it has gotten to me a little bit more than what it used to just because it's been two years and I still get dead named for my family. <sighs> That's hard because you you work so hard on yourself and you spend so much time like mm-hmm. uh, trying to let the world perceive you as who you truly are and the people to, who are closest to you can't do it. That's upsetting, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, and it it just like with my on my dad my parents are divorced, but on my dad's side it's kind of more of the thing of like I have to be my dead name because I have little sisters 
and I don't necessarily not want to expose them to that, but like, I don't want to lose them if something does go wrong. Hey, that makes you a strong person. Lately, lately, right now, it's been a struggle. I've been trying to go through the fact of whether I keep this going or, and like, just deal with it Mm. or like, do I actually say something about it? Because it's starting to affect my mental health. Like it's starting to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, because when did you start living alone? College. So right after high school, that summer, I um, was with my parents, and then my freshman year of college, I was in a dorm because um, I was five and a half hours away from Alabama. Mm, right, um, right, right. So, um, the because I dropped out, I didn't graduate. Um, dropped out. Uh, the semester I dropped out, I Facebook messaged a whole bunch of people, be like, "Hey, are you looking for a roommate? Hmm. I'll pay rent." and lived with the dude um which he was really cool awesome dude awesome dude um lived with him for about five-ish months six months until his lease ended and then got the lease by myself and had my best friends from college move in with me and and i've just been living by myself ever since then um when i did move back to alabama though i lived with my mom for a little bit um now that you're living alone, though, do you think that that has helped the situation at all? Like, do they give you your space? How often do you, like, talk to them? How I talk to my space? mom every day. Okay. Talk to my mother every day. That woman is my best friend. I hate to say it, but my, hey. my mother is my best friend. Me and my dad, I love them. We don't have the greatest relationship. We don't agree mm-hmm. on the same things. We've always had, I mean, even when um, I was out as a lesbian, as, mm. as gay, whatever you want to call it. Um, he wasn't cool with it either. It was kind of just something he just like didn't really acknowledge. Mm. Um, so we've just never really had a good relationship. Is it, a, then, is it a religious thing with your family or is it something they just aren't like haven't been exposed to enough or something? I would say with my dad it is. My dad, I would say it's religion based with my dad for sure. Um, just because when I was a lesbian mm-hmm. um he was like you're going to hell kind of thing and like held the bible in front of my face oh damn um i was like this isn't right and then right. my mom i just think it's more of like it hasn't been exposed kind of thing like she knows trans women she knows men transitioning into women so she she's mm-hmm. more of that because which is how they've most been there be. they they've been here longer right and, yeah and is what they would say but right. i just you kind of just deal with it at this point that's a common theme i think for a lot of people who uh, don't understand the trans community all they see is trans women but they're not actually seeing trans women they see drag queens which is a completely yeah. different Completely different thing. I know that when I came out to my dad as trans, I know that's what he was thinking that I'd look like a fucking drag queen, which is like the complete fucking opposite. Like, (laughs) I think that though, with my dad, when he realized I was passing as cis and that other people weren't going to look at me like I was a freak, that's Mm -hmm. when he started to be like, okay, like maybe it's okay. You know what I mean? I I mean, me and me and my friend were talking about it the other day, uh, like because like I said, it's been a struggle for me recently. Mm-hmm. I hope I have a lot of hope for my family in general, just all of my family, especially my dad, because I've come to the conclusion of he's probably never going to accept me as his son, and I kind of just have to deal with that. It's just going to have to be something that's. I mean, I I don't think I don't think he'll ever accept me, even if I had a full beard and changed my name legally uh, which we're in the works with but changed my name legally and stuff like that i just i don't think he'll ever accept me as his son that's wild because like what if you know you know and i'm relating it to my dad a little here like what if you know you do have 
when you do have a full beard one day and you're all hair and you're passing like hella hella cis and not mm-hmm. one person can tell i guess like and he's saying she in front of a group of people he's gonna be the one that looks silly i right? don't think i don't i think it'll come to i don't think he'll have I don't think he'll be in that situation. And I hate to say that I do, because like I said, I'm a big family person and I love, I love my family so much. And I think I've stayed so long Mm -hmm. because of my sisters, um, the second oldest. Um, And so the youngest is three, five, the youngest is five. Um, It goes five, eight, 16, 19 and then think one will be 20 this november wow um, big family so i have i mean i have a big family and so yeah. i i i hope to god that one day maybe they'll see me as who i am but i don't i just i don't know i think i don't think he'll ever be in that situation because i think i'll get to the point to where i'm like this is what has to be done mm-hmm. i can't do this anymore and i mean at the end of the day, like, and it's interesting because my last episode with Luke, he was kind of all about like how important is family when you're transitioning, mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, you have to put yourself first, no matter what. Exactly. Exactly. And it's interesting to hear that, like, you know, you are saying that at the end of the day, you know, maybe years led down the line, if they're still not accepting you, then, you know, you have to put yourself first. But it's interesting to yeah. hear that, like, you've gone a long time now with them still dead naming you not supporting you that you're still like they're my family you know what else am yeah. i supposed to do and i think yeah. while a lot of people can relate to uh my last episode where we were like fuck it do what you got to do a lot of people will also relate to this where it's like well they're my it's, family i will say yeah like seeing seeing we'll see the we'll say the lgt community because it's not just trans men and trans women right Seeing people in the uh, LGBT community um, that have just shut off all contact with their family, it does blow my mind a little bit. It it does. It it, it takes me by surprise because I'm, like I said, I'm I'm a person like, how can you do that? Like that's your family, blah blah blah. But then like now that I'm in this situation, I'm like I completely understand you. Like I understand you 100. Mm-hmm. percent You know, like it's getting to the point where I'm like, at this point, I'm about to have to choose my family. Yeah. No, I can't imagine that. Like, I can't, like, I mean, like when I came out, like did both my parents give me a little bit of a hard time? Yeah. And I was like, it's crazy. I think it's just a state of mind and it depends on who you are as a person, how family oriented you are, because like, mom, I love you. But like, even though my mom and my dad, well, my mom didn't give me that much of a problem. I was still like ready to be like, if you don't support me, bye bye. Like, yeah. and it wasn't even half as bad to like what you or Luke had to go through. You know what I mean? I think it's mm-hmm. just a state of mind, which is weird. My dad yeah. was a little bit more aggressive than my mom was about it, but um, I stayed away from my dad. Like, as in, like, if I didn't have to talk to him, like, I wouldn't talk with to him. Yeah. Um, I I avoided that. I wanted the a relationship, a great relationship with my dad, which I will say before I was before when i still identified as um a lesbian and as a woman i had the girlfriend that i had talked about um before i had come out mm. my dad absolutely loved her absolutely loved her she she was the first girl i took home she met my family like all of that and then um, we had a great relationship and then i came out as trans and it completely went downhill again and i had i mean my sister one of my closest sisters she was like you're doing this like you're you're ruining your relationship with dad like y'all's relationship just got good like you can't do this this is making it worse and i was just like i don't know what you want me to say because like this is me like this is who i am this is not again this is not something i chose that's right exactly especially what I especially if i mentioned something when i was 12 what makes you think this is a choice mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what makes you think this is a choice and that's i think that's where all transphobia stems from and i we keep circling back here but like it's a real problem y'all like it really <laughs> is it really is it's definitely where all transphobia stems from is is people thinking that it's a choice and yeah. I think that once they learn that it's not a choice, like 
transphobia is not transphobia is a choice <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like and don't bring religion into it because <laughs> <laughs> put the dukes up bro like yeah i know like come on bro don't bring that don't <clears throat> that is like one of, i hate religion okay i am agnostic if anything i might be atheist i hate saying that aloud mm -hmm. because i do have a grandparent that is a very religious person and i told her that <laughs> didn't go over well i get bible verses every morning which i love her for absolutely love her for yeah but, i mean the thought the thinking of you but, is nice and everything yeah. yeah 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 but it's just like it's the, to the point of like you're telling me what i'm doing is a sin yet you're sitting here judging me for it which is also a sin not only that you say god doesn't make mistakes yet you're telling me i'm a mistake how is this a mistake that, you how, know how am i how am i a mistake no. I believe if if there is a God, if there is a God, he made me this way. He was like, you're going to be this. You're going to be a girl. You're going to go by this name, but you're going to have a mental life crisis <laughs> because. But I'm going to put you through hell. <laughs> I'm literally, I'm about to give you my strongest battle <laughs> and my strongest soldier. Like you can't, you can't sit here and tell me, which is a different topic, but you can't sit here and tell me that god made a mistake with me because mm -hmm. <laughs> okay yeah no, either absolutely not. either god does make mistakes and i was like a mistake and i'm living with it or he, doesn't. Going to hell either way, <laughs> or he but... doesn't make mistakes <laughs> and like he wanted me to be this way because i'm right. strong you whore like <laughs> right like it just yeah no i get that <laughs> to the to the general transphobia is a choice and if you're transphobic all I got to say is to you is think about the bigger picture. Hmm. I don't have a problem with you being who you are. Why, why me being trans, me being the person that I know I am. Why does that bother you so much? Right. Why does that bother you so much? Mm -hmm. and why are you worried about my life? Mm -hmm. I completely agree. I think bear actually put it in, in a good way. He was like, why are you so obsessed with me? I have never yeah, thought true. about you a day in my life. I don't care about what's in your pants. I don't think about you like that. Why are you thinking about me like that? That's weird. Exactly. You're a freak. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I think also not all transphobic people, but I would say most transphobic people are transphobic because they have gender identity problems themselves, just like homophobic 100%. people. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. I think we had talked about this the other day, but something mm -hmm. along the lines of, um, I think we'll get into it later in the video, but comments, the comments. Too. Yeah, we're, we're there. Transphobia, we are here. We are in our, okay. in our next Look, Let's just get into it. <laughs> if you have trans men, trans women, anything of the LGBTQIA plus community, on your for you page i want you to know that it is there for a reason uh-huh it is there for a reason yep. you make your feed mm -hmm. you like certain videos and that is the reason you're here mm -hmm. so whether you got some internal homophobia or internal transphobia or whatever the case may be <laughs> you need to have a sit down with yourself mm -hmm. you choose your own for you page <laughs> literally so if i'm up on your shit there's a reason for it. There's a there's a reason. You're looking at there trans men. <laughs> like... There's a reason. Either you have an obsession, which is weird, or you got something going on in your own mind. Mm -hmm. You're trying to learn, or you're trying to do some weird shit. Wow. <laughs> and you can learn without being transphobic. Yeah, yeah. You can you can learn. Just listen. You don't gotta say anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything to you. People are so gung ho on the fact that it's again a choice, and that we're. Br I got I got a hate comment today, and I'm gonna get more into my hate comments in a bit. But I got a hate comment today saying that I'm brainwashing people. Yeah, because that's what I'm doing. That's why I, mean, I promise you, we are <laughs> by far not brainwashing people. Because I'm sure again. If this is on their for you page, mm -hmm. or if this is in their feed, it is there for a reason, mm -hmm. not because of us, mm -hmm. not because of us. Mm -hmm. Do you, you told me that you play a lot of COD, Call of Duty. I do, <laughs> probably too much. I think, put it this way, I think I have like 24, I think it's like three days is what it is. <laughs> three days and like 22 hours or something like that on COD, I... which is 
I want to play with you one time because Dude, cod lobbies you. are a different, Fox yeah, a different fucking place. A breed, different breed. Yeah. <laughs> like you told me that you you tend you tell people that you're trans on mic. When you um, or no? yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> I mean, bold. I do. Like, it's not like every every everything. I think it's more of the fact of like. So first of all, my gamer tag is I'm dead literally because i suck at the game but <laughs> i love it so much but it's just the fact of like i know my voice is a little higher than what people see a cis man's voice as me too okay. and so like if i get shot or if i get down or if i make the wrong move that that person doesn't want me to get like mm -hmm. cussing city comes at me like insult city like everything and so i'm just like you know what's gonna make this worse for you i'm trans <laughs> <laughs> and they're you're like, so bold they're like, they're like, they're like, you're what? You're a, you're a, you're an it? I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm a he, mm -hmm. but I'm trans. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what the fuck does that mean? And I'm like, dude, you are brave. I, uh, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and so then it just brings on the comments of, well, what's in your pants? Do you have top surgery or do you have surgeries because nobody knows what surgery <laughs> they would never call do it you, by name come on now no, no. <laughs> do you do you have a chest do you have a female anatomy and i'm like hmm. oh they're so bold this, they're so bold when the, they, you can't let me see put it your face way. i'm gonna say this right now because it's the truth and the truth the whole the whole truth nothing but the truth the only reason people say what they say online is because they are behind a mic and a screen if they were in person they would not say a damn thing to you mm -hmm. excuse mm -hmm. my friend <laughs> excuse my french except for it's me ridiculous. fuck off sis <laughs> 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 but no it's just like some like i had i had one guy the other day i had been playing with him for a couple of days he was really cool we were you know we were we were in the game and everything like that and um someone had come into our lobby and so my emblem is a trans flag so First of all, <laughs> nobody knows what that is nobody nobody has no clue what that is <laughs> this dude came into my lobby and he was like one of you guys have a trans flag and i was like who <laughs> said what this man knows what this is i'm sorry Hold <laughs> on, we gotta have a conversation about this and so i was like yeah that's me Mm -hmm. He was like, that's cool. Like, I'm so happy for you. And I was like, thanks, dude. Like, that's awesome. And then wow. the dude that was already with me, that was already, mm -hmm. this is the dude that came in. We'll mm -hmm. call him Jay. I was playing with T originally. Jay was all happy for me and everything. Mm -hmm. T man, okay. He was like, what's trans? And I was like, oh. okay, well, you know, it's this. This is, you know, this is who I am. This is me. Um, I was born female, but I am transitioning into a male. And then he was like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. And then proceeds to proceeds to say my wrong pronouns to misgender me, and I was like, "What sense does that make? <laughs> Why you were you were just calling me he, mm -hmm. and like you're cool, dude? Was like, he you're confused? Awesome. You're an awesome. You're an awesome. Absolutely not. Oh, he's absolutely been dick. not. Jesus. Absolutely not. He was just being a dick. Oh, and I was God. just like, I was just like, uh, I. Mm, you like you were uh, okay with it before you knew. You know, Literally. What I mean? like, like if this man wouldn't have come, if T wouldn't have come into this group chat, we would have never known. Mm -hmm. Like, never known. You liked me before, and I'm the Literally. same person. I am the same, same person. Same person. Same you were, person. Just you were because so I get more kills than you doesn't give you a right <laughs> to be mean to me. <laughs> Dead ass. Like he was supporting you before he knew. Like you know before what I mean? Before he knew. Like before you. Which which the gaming community is very sexist. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So that has a that has a huge part with it, which I think that's something you and um, Ariel, yeah, Ariel, yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, <laughs> <talk about anything, laughs> but yes, I think it's something that you and her had discussed. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just like I was like, yes, yes, yeah. Yes. Just her, her being a female and her being very good at video games, she gets a lot of uh, toxic cis men, oh, nasty sure cis men, but she's quick with it. Sure it. She's she's one of those girls that's like fucking quick. She with seems it. like one of those people that just pops off right then and there. She like knows like if I was in a game with her, I would probably not be able to play because I'd be rolling. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent happens every time I play with her. I love you, Ariel. <laughs>
<laughs> but no, she's quick with it. And that on games, I feel like on here or like on Instagram or TikTok where I get all my hate comments, like I can be a little quick with it. I mean, I guess it's behind a keyboard, so I'm a little slower with it. But like on games where they're in my ear and they're, there's like eight of them like fucking – coming at me like monkeys i'm like <laughs> and i like hide and i don't know how to act but like <sighs> i i think i think one of the greatest things that i said was like i had one of this he knew what the flag was he knew what the flag was and mm. he like asked me questions and stuff like that and like i'm open about who i am especially being in living in alabama you don't know they're not they're not around people like that all the time and if you do meet a trans person they are very to themselves and so like i like being open because if people do have questions i i want them to come to me and ask yeah yeah if you're rude about it i'm not going to tell you anything Mm -hmm. but like i want you to ask me and i'm going to be open with you Mm -hmm. and so he anyways he knew that i he he came in and he he asked me questions and so he knew that i was a uh uh, an ftm female to male uh, a trans man and um he was like something that something happened either he died or i got more kills or something along the line and he just went at it he just like dogged on me dog on me and i just like sat there and laughed and like the one i don't know why i remember this now the one thing all i could say was at least i get more pussy than you <laughs> he left my game <laughs> I was like, I was just getting started. He left. <laughs> he left. <laughs> I was so mad. I was Bro. like, God, I had him, I had him racked up. I was ready to go. And he would just, he just left. And I was like, well, I guess I'll play the game by myself. <laughs> Dude, it's like, oh my God. It's, it's, it blows my mind how upset these fools get over these games. <laughs> like it's like real life and they're, it. yeah. Like, they're oh, real soldiers in war. Like, you are holding a controller. You're playing with your thumbs. Like, please. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm a veteran of online. <laughs> and it's always, uh, it's always the kids who think they can, like, fucking actually be in the military and go out and do all the things that their little character that they made can actually do. Really? Like, fucking... I think what blows my mind more than anything, like in the in in just in the gaming industry, is like this is gonna sound weird, but you can tell when a kid is white. Yeah. Is that is that is that is that wrong to say? No, you can tell. Like you can tell when a kid is white, and so when they say, especially when they say the N word, I'm just like, you wouldn't say this out loud because you're behind a fucking screen. But because you're behind a screen and you're not around people, it gives you the right. Yeah, and dude, it's also like, boy, like you are whiter than Casper. <laughs> shut up. There's also like just no rules within the gaming community. Like it's like a thing that there's no rules, and yeah. which makes it worse. Which makes them think it's okay. And I, like mm-hmm. I know people who will like fucking go into voice chat or whatever on on Discord or on in an Xbox party and be racist as shit and then when yes. they're when they're in front of black people or any anybody else in front of gay people in front of trans people like they'll say the n-word within their their close friends or whatever yep. and then they go into real life and they're they're not like yeah it's because you're behind a fucking screen bro like you are scared exactly. like exactly ugh, it makes me so like mad. i wish half of the people that i talked to and that did have a negative effect on me with being trans in the gaming community, I wish we could just sit in a room together. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure more than 90% of you, I look so much harder than, Literally. first of all. Second of all, I'm pretty sure I get more kills than you. <laughs> that, that's what makes them the most mad. I mean, come I on. Just, I just, like, if I was in a room with all these men, I'd be like, <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> That's so funny. Dude, you know, I got... Be like kicking my feet. <laughs> kicking my feet and shit. <laughs> Over here kicking in like like when you're on your stomach and you're like kicking your feet. <laughs> tell me more like, what you hate me. me. <laughs> I love it. Oh, and they would love that, honestly. Um, But I, I put it on my story... Uh, yesterday this i want to share this my favorite hate comment i've ever gotten is on a video um me and ariel were in i posted and it's 
us talking about Nikita Dragon, which we talked about in that episode a lot. And um, I'm basically talking about how Nikita was placed in a men's jail cell because she got arrested. Um, I think I read that um, she got arrested because she was walking around naked in a hotel room or something and she was told to stop and she didn't stop. But that's only one side of the story that I heard. Mm -hmm. I would... I'm inclined to believe that transphobia was involved in this, and that's why she didn't want to put her clothes on, but that's just my humble opinion. Uh, but in this video, I said that uh, the judge and whatever was a prick for not putting her in the women's mm -hmm. cell and that it should be her human right to be placed in the gender that she identifies with. And I got so many fucking hate comments with these fucking Republican ass men thinking that they're smarter than me going, you think There's that's a human right? Comment. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to, I want to point out something real quick. Mm -hmm. I'm not to interrupt you. There's one comment that is by a woman that I know of every other one of those. Cause I went and looked at these people. <laughs> so every one of these, every one, every other, uh, all the other comments, goodness gracious, Jack. <laughs> all the other comments, except for one that I know of, is men. Is men. No. I didn't even know there was a woman in there. That's so funny. She's like the second comment, I think. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I just know that I went and looked at every single one of these profiles. And <laughs> one, not only did they only have like two photos per mm -hmm. freaking uh, post, um, but most of them are private and they had like four photos mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's because you're out behind a fucking screen like and exactly. all of them i think two of them didn't even have a profile picture <laughs> I know. that but the one who didn't have a profile picture has the longest comment i'll read it right now he goes <laughs> from ace one zero seven three bring him up He's got 66 followers. Go, you ace. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> he says, he said, did that become a man's human right that caused himself a woman to be placed in a woman's prison? You sound like an idiot, and everybody that talks like that looks like they just graduated high school. If you, if you were born a male and you have those chromosomes of a male, you go to a male prison just like they could not take over women's sports they're damn sure not going to women's prisons that's that's what's wrong with you kids everybody that talks like that acts like they look like they just graduated from high school this isn't me fucking up he actually typed these words this out. is uh, yeah I, I i can vouch for this man right here um this is how this comment literally is like i felt drop reading it mm -hmm. like i'm deciphering code is what i'm doing right first now. of all if you're gonna try to insult us learn to type dead ass like be like, above the second grade reading level and writing level. I, like, <laughs> I know you went to school. If you dropped out, that's your fault. But I know for a fact you passed seventh grade. Dude, yeah. And uh, my favorite hate comment in here on this Nikita Dragon uh, mm -hmm. video that I posted. Maddie underscore J Het 89 says, when you'll say whatever it takes to get laid. <laughs> and I think. I think that's my favorite fucking hate comment because, yeah, this podcast is just a ploy for me to bag all the women. <laughs> I'm I'm siding with Nikita Dragon so that all the women of the world will agree with me and want me in their beds. That's exactly yeah, what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah. But as this man states, maybe he commented just to get laid. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> because, like – Probably in reality, we probably get laid a lot more than you do. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and being trans men, <laughs> we definitely see. It's funny. Definitely. It's funny because he doesn't even realize that I'm trans. Like he's hating on this trans woman and thinks that I'm a cis man standing up for her, thinking that all these women around the world are going to agree with me. And that's the point of view he's coming at. Like, I think that that's what just blows my mind more. That like, it, it's hilarious to me that. Half of these people, and I'm not just talking about people that comment, I'm talking about most transphobic and homophobic people, mainly transphobic people. Mm -hmm. I can I can assure you, you have touched a trans person that you didn't know was trans. Mm -hmm. And you didn't know because they don't want you to know. Exactly. Like, exactly. They don't want you to know because you're a piece of garbage. Literally. <laughs> Uh, I think it's also funny. Um, I got, I'm getting a lot of comments like the fucking last one I got right before we started this is from Brent 
J. Lamurray. Can't even say your name, you fucking weirdo. Um, he looks like a brick. This is him. He looks he looks like a brick. This is him. Uh, he said he said, if you have a dong, you go to the jail with other people that have dongs. Okay. Why you say the word. First, <laughs> yeah, of all. first of all, you're a third grader. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the jail. If you call your PP a dog, <laughs> we need to have a conversation. No, for real. <laughs> and, and I would rather you say PP than dog. Yeah, no, for real. <laughs> and it's funny, and not that it's anybody's fucking business, but since exactly. she's she's put it into the public, Nikita has had bottom surgery. She got bottom surgery. She doesn't have a dong, you fucking moron. Like, do your fucking research before you comment shit like this. You have no idea what you're talking about. So by that logic, by that fucking logic, you're proving my point that she should be in a women's cell. Exactly. 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 Mm-hmm. I just – and my biggest thing, because, like, one of the comments was something along the lines of trans women getting put into women's cells – and women getting pregnant okay first of all first of all they chose to be in a women's cell because of they're probably most likely female Mm -hmm. more than i I put it on this okay they wouldn't go into a women's cell if they how do i how do i say this they didn't want to go into a men's cell because they don't feel comfortable with men especially a trans woman, which I can't speak on this. I can't because I am a trans man. Mm -hmm. But what I can say, if a trans woman doesn't want go, doesn't want to go into a men's cell, there is probably a good reason. One, because cis men are gross. (laughs) Cis women are gross. And like you you said something, um, a couple episodes along the lines of, or it was in one of your episodes along the lines of trans women are Like, it was like 81% of, it was trans women. It was uh, something along the lines of that. They they get more hate crimes than we do. Yes. It is, it is harder for a trans woman, Mm -hmm. a trans woman than it is a trans man. Mm -hmm. Um, And I agree with that. I a hundred percent agree with that. Going into a, if, if I was to get arrested, which I hope to God I don't, but if I was to get arrested and I was like, "Mm, I want to go into the women's cell, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right now, I would go into the women's cell. One, because I feel safer with women. Mm -hmm. Two, because if I was to go into a, if I was to, if I was to look like I do now, or even, even if a man, a cis man was to find out I was trans and I was in a men's set, I would get my butt whooped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would get I would probably die. I, not to put it out there, but I would probably die. No, like most likely, yeah. Like, and that's the part where where all these stupid fuckers in my comment section are saying, you know, you should be in the cell or the prison that aligns with your genitalia or what you your assigned birth, whatever assigned birth, assigned gender at birth. Like, they are thinking about trans women in women's cells, and they're mm-hmm. thinking that cis women will be in danger where they're not thinking Mm -hmm. of trans men where like if we have to be in a men's prison we will most likely die like (laughs) that's what they're not thinking of and if you're excluding trans women you're excluding trans men and it fucking goes farther to show that we don't exist to the public eye (laughs) i mean my only question put it this way my only question to these people that have hate commented about you know being put into the gendered cell that you Mm -hmm. should be in um is if i was to get arrested and me and you not me and you but this the person that hated on us or on y'all if i was to go into a jail cell with men and they found out that i was trans what would what would they do what would they do to me unspeakable things to be honest do you under do you understand what i'm saying yeah like okay yeah like, like and, this is this is to the people that are transphobic. What would you do if you knew that I was trans in your jail cell? There it is. There it is. What would you do? Mm-hmm. Um, Same thing for a trans woman. What you see is women. Mm-hmm. But just because she was born as a male and some dickhead decided, well, you were born as male, you're going to be in a male cell. No, absolutely. Because I know for a fact that you would probably be the shit out of her. Mm-hmm. Or take advantage of her. Mm-hmm. And the whole thing is we have to protect 
women in general before trans people. Why? I think people definitely would, re or these people in my comments at least, want to put cis women or have cis women be more safe rather than trans people. And it's it's always, like, this person in my comments is, like, uh, fucking the people who, the one trans woman, one trans woman who uh, got arrested and was in a prison and impregnated two other women. I read the article. It says nothing about sexual harassment in any form. Just putting that out there. Uh, they chose. Yeah. Like it, was, it's, it was a choice. It sounds like it was a choice. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know why we're so fucking mad about it especially you being a fucking cis het man. Um, but that's their one fucking argument is that one trans person, one trans woman in all of America was put into a woman's prison and impregnated two women. I said, I said, okay, you're taking one story and you're pretending like this is a thing that's happening all over the fucking world. And it's exactly. not exactly. like you think you ate with that. You did not, sir. You proved nothing. You proved absolutely and nothing. And didn't at the end of that, wasn't that the same guy at the end of that conversation? He was just like, well, don't go to prison. Then. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, a five-year-old could have come up with something better than that. Like, <laughs> you're just going to leave this conversation? <laughs> just don't do that, man. Just don't do that. Just don't do that. <laughs> just don't go to prison. Yeah, okay, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate you. You're so smart. <laughs> I, you're right. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> like, just... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for going to prison, you know? <laughs> My bad. Yeah, and like I'm sorry for thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And their whole thing, they're making fun of me because I said it's her human right to be placed in a jail cell that doesn't align with her gender identity. And they think they're eating it up in my comment section. They think they're doing so good. They think they're really getting me. No, literally. Because like that's their thing is the, that I said that it's a human right. And I understand I, they think I'm stupid. They think that I think that when you go to prison or to jail that you have all the rights you did before. And I understand that you don't. I understand how the justice system works. I get it. But I encourage you to also go watch the full fucking episode and not just one little clip on TikTok before you start running your fucking mouth. But Agreed. If you were smart, you would do have done your research and realized that Nikita has gotten bottom surgery. So what I said before, like your logic makes no sense. Uh, two, she legally changed her name. Legally, she is a woman. Her gender marker is F. So legally, it is her human right. It is her human right to be placed in a, in a jail cell with women. You ignorant fucks. Yeah, yeah. And that goes, with, that goes with all trans women because I can – assure you that if a trans woman wants to go into a women's cell it's not to sexually harass another woman yeah yeah like you, does that make sense mm -hmm. like they're not going in there because they want to pry on women right and it's it's you know when you're a kid and uh there's a dress code in school and it's like yes. women women should w not wear certain things so that the boys don't get distracted. Mm -hmm. Girls have to do better so that the men don't violate you. It's like, yeah. why Why do the trans women or trans men have to be put down so that cis men can act better? Why can't we right. teach the cis men? Why can't we make it so that right. the cis, man can't, cis men can't hurt us? Like, what? Yeah. what is that fucking right. logic? 100%, yeah. I hate the society that we live in. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> um, this is another reason I stay out of politics. Yeah, I know. And it sucks that I have to, like, I have to look these things up now and I have to <laughs> expose myself to this <laughs> shit. It's so goddamn fucking draining. It's, rid it's ridiculous. But I want to bring it to light so that people understand just how stupid it is. Because it, uh, we're. I've it said just enough. doesn't make sense. No, no, it does not. Like, and you take a minute out of your day to say something hateful towards a trans, to trans people, or just in general about trans, just in the LGBT community. Like, you take a minute out of your day to say something, and then you go on about your life because mm -hmm. it didn't really matter in the first place. You just right. said it because you have big boy bad attitude. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Like, why? Why? What's the difference in not commenting and commenting other than, oh, I got a big dick? <laughs> it's just to prove <laughs> that you got a big dick when nobody cares about your dick. Like, you, nobody I, cares about you the way you care about us. Like, it's. Uh, facts, dude. <laughs> you mad that the whole world is talking about us right now and not talking about you because all exactly. cis men want to do typically is play victim and they're mad that other people are the victims right now is what it comes down mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. now we did have more topics but we've been going for a good couple Dude, hours this has now gone on a lot longer than what i thought it was going to <laughs> yeah so uh, i'm gonna call it right there just because we've been doing this for a while but jackson Thank you yes. so much for coming on. This was one of my favorites. Every every time I'm like, this is one of my favorites, just because they keep getting better and better. But I appreciate you coming on. Um, do you? Dude, I am very thankful. I'm very very honored to be here too. Oh yeah, I'm glad you were, and I definitely want you back if you'll be back on. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, do you have any socials you would like to plug so people can follow you? Um, yeah, sure. My Instagram is. Jackson Walk. It's J A X X O N W A L K K. Hell yeah. Um, and then if you want to add my Snapchat, it is JBW.22. Slay, blow that jump. I don't have Twitter or X as they call it now. Stupid. Um, <laughs> in my life. Um, and I think that's really the main two that I'm on. I think I have a TikTok too, but I don't remember. So I'll just I'll <laughs> type it in so you can put it up there. All right, word. Uh, and if you want to follow me on Instagram and TikTok, it's H H H H H. It's H R T podcast. Uh, I post there every single day. Uh, and subscribe to me here. Why not? Only if I see that so many more people are viewing it than who are subscribed. So. Just hit the subscribe button. It's right there, girly. Come on, please. Do it. It's worth it. <laughs> uh, and subscribe to me on Patreon as well at HRT. I post videos there every Tuesday as well. Uh, there I get more into the spicy things about being trans. So if you're interested in that, go find me on there. I see. And yeah, I drop videos every Tuesday. So be there, be square. And thank you, Jackson, for coming on today. Appreciate it. I will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.